Got a mailbag, but I'm missing my video clip for the beginning. Oh. So these are some kind of uh, tiny little bearings. Oh, I know what these are. These are um, like M2 bearings. Do I have? I do. Okay, hold on a second. Let me remove some of this stuff. Um, so I bought this little little gear motor. It's a gearbox. It's a really slow, very high torque. I, uh, I bought another one because this was a little too slow. Um, uh, I don't remember. They don't, they're not labeled, I'm guessing. And you can't take these apart and redo the gearing. They're like pinched together. There's screws there, but I couldn't get them apart. It seems like they pressed them together. I'm going to guess they just rearranged these gears somehow or changed this, you know, one of the lead uh, gears. But I think this was a 50 RPM and the other one was a 200 on got I, the one I ordered. I was looking to use this to like build a linear actuator to be able to push things back and forth. Um, either design a carriage that this is on or just use this itself to go back and forth and let it slide inside of something. So either way, it turned out I'm going to need... I wonder if this will work if I just slip the tops off of these. Yeah, that works better. I'm going to start cutting the tops off of the bags so I can actually open them and use them again. So these should be an M2. Jeez, they're greasy. stuck together. I can't get them out. <laughs> it's probably dissolving the plastic bag if it's petroleum based grease. Get that paper out of there. So this should fit in here. It gives me a nice bearing surface. It's not very tight but might come in handy for some kind of uh, guide rail that's going to rotate or <clears throat> some other mechanic stuff. I've been buying a lot of mechanical stuff. I've never really done mechanical work, but now that I can 3D print and design, and uh, now that I've gotten pretty good at 3D printing and I'm fairly decent at fusion, um, I think I can start designing um, mechanical projects. So those would be interesting, kind of like a micro bearing. Never know what you're going to need little bearings for. All right, next up is a power module. All right, so like I said last time, I ordered a bunch of buck boost converters. I think these are all boost converters. I don't know which one this is. It must be a boost, right? If it's got a... Yeah, this must be a boost converter. Um, there you go. In, out. High HW. I'm assuming that's the high voltage. Uh, let's see, 35 volt caps. I don't really know. It's hard to tell. There's a big... Yeah, that's definitely, um, definitely some kind of converter regulator. Probably a boost converter. I don't know. It says uh, HW083. I'm thinking it's a buck converter. Let's see. No, it's definitely a boost converter because look at the isolation on this side. Okay, so he's probably taking 0 to 12 in and putting out 35 volts or something like that. And there's a current sense resistor on this side, so yeah. I'm going to guess that's you probably don't need that for, for a buck converter. All right, self-locking nuts. I think I needed this to run 24 volt fans off of 5 volts, something like that, or, or geared motors. Like this is only 6 volts, but you get my drift. 
All right, these are called um, cinching inserts, I think. Self cinching inserts. Uh, these kind of, um, you probably have seen these on like maybe a motherboard. These are basically a little threaded insert that you put inside of a sheet, metal sheet, like a steel sheet or something. And um, you just use a press and press it in there and it's supposed to grab the edges and, uh, and it just stays in the material. Then you have a, a rigid standoff without having any... Um... Well, these ones are different than some of the, the hexagons push it, uh, the, like the hexagon ones. This has got you know, a fully threaded through hole. So you'd still have a hole, but... Um, you wouldn't have a bolt going through or anything like that. I thought those were kind of neat. I don't know how you actually get them to work. You probably have to have hard a hard sheet, and you probably have to have a really strong press. But uh, I'm gonna look into that. I find it uh, very interesting. It'd be cool to be able to you just use a piece of sheet metal and um, put standoffs and build a project on that like that. And maybe it has a uh, maybe you can use these as insets in uh, 3D prints, maybe. Um, something that's very shallow. You know, those um, those brass knurled inserts, they're, they're nice, but they're really, they're really deep and they add a lot of bulk to your, uh, your stuff. These might be a decent solution, even if you just glued them. I'll try those out, see if they have any use. Silicone Thermal. It's just some uh, heat sink plaster. So this is basically when you want to, um, not permanently, but rigidly, uh, you know, adhere something to a heat sink, whether it be, um, you know, a thermal component or um, this is really good for mounting uh, thermocouples and stuff to a heat sink and having them stay in place without having some kind of fastener. Uh, that's going to be on there, or having to tap uh, a hole, a, uh, you know, tap a screw hole to, to screw it down. So that's that's what that's good for. It's also good for like gluing things down to a PCB if you're going to use a, a PCB heat sink, you know, a PCB um, flood as your sink and not have to have fastening hardware. Um, so this is when you don't want to use a, some kind of clamping mechanism and a heat sill. Which is probably, which you'll probably want when, a lot when you're doing maker projects. You just want to put stuff together, have it high temperature, and have it uh, you know stay stay good. All right, next XT60 connectors. I think you have those ye those yellow battery connectors. Yeah, these are those high power connectors. These are like what's used in my 3D some 3D printers. My Andrew 3 has these in them. I figured I would like to um, make it proper. Maybe I can make a, a something that goes in between it to control the power. I was thinking about maybe doing some kind of um, power control to turn it on and off and leave it in standby. Not really sure um, what I was going to do, but um, these were pretty expensive, so I got one to check out the quality. These are the solderable cup, cup ones. The nicer ones I've seen have uh, caps that go on the end too, the newer ones. Those are good for high power. Anything you want to wire up high power and need a good connector. And it's keyed so it only goes one way. Uh, next, fans cooling. Okay, these are standoffs. There are two different kinds of standoffs, or is it one kind? One kind of standoff. I'm afraid to put that in there. I think once you put it in there, you don't get it out. Okay. So those are clickable, adjustable standoffs. Basically, you would attach that to something. 
and then you can put this on your board and you can raise it and lower it or you can just click it in and then your, your assembly is done. Um, I'm not going to pull that back out now. You just got to pop that little tab up and it pulls back out. It looks like it has two different positions. Yeah, it's two different positions. Click, click. I don't know why they're not very far apart, but um, it looks like once you click it in, it spreads and clamps from the bottom. So I wonder if I have something that's this size. Um, no, I don't think I do. I don't have anything that size. It's probably for a four millimeter hole or something like that. Well, that's what it does. It clicks in. I don't know what this side's for, how that's going to mount into something, but it's got a. Um, I mean, these must be for motherboards. These must be for motherboards. They have a. It has a circle thing, so it has the receiver. This goes in. It's keyed, and then you turn it, and it tightens down and holds it in place. Okay. Some kind of motherboard supports. I've never seen those before. Interesting. Alright, next uh, doesn't say. Looks like a reship. Alright, these are some more nut certs I bought. I have aluminum ones. I bought some brass ones. Uh, just because I tried testing those and they um, they weren't strong enough and I kind of mangled them. I'm going to try these. Uh, these are, should require significantly more force to set, but these will be good for probably power tools um, and they probably won't bend or mar as much, especially if you need them to be threadable after you put them in. So, again, yeah, some mechanical stuff sheet metal, stuff like that. All right, next is fan. All right, I got a fan here. Got a heat sink fan with a built-in fan. Comes with the fan. It's a 12 volt brushless fan that's mounted inside and it has three, three mounting holes that screws to the heat sink. And then um, I really need to start buying a bunch of these to just to get these little things. These are kind of hard to find. I don't know what they're called, but um, they are really good for holding heat sinks onto stuff. If you have a board that you need to keep cool or a, something you need to mount on a board, and you, all you need is make some kind of jig that these can go into, and then you're going to apply nice tension to your heat sink against your whatever you're trying to cool. I don't understand why they do this. Why they make heat sinks like this? Why they? Why would you anodize it? And why would you? I don't. I don't get it. Like, so increase the surface area, but you have to use. I always thought you'd want it as flat as possible, for contact. I don't. I don't really get it smoother on the top than it is on the bottom. It's like they purposely put that brushed effect on there. Either way, it's a cool heat sink. Be good for um, cooling down some SSRs and stuff like that. It's got the heat sink built in. I mean, it's got the fan built into the heat sink. You can find somewhere to mount it. So that's cool. I think it was pretty cheap, so I was checking it out. I don't know why it's orange. All right, next, T8 Nut. All right, this is a T8 nut, but it's the flattened, non it's the, the, the rectangular one, not the round one. Uh, this is what I need for my 3D printer to fit. I have an Ender 3, and it only, it, you, you can't use the round ones because it hits the extruder. You'd have to bring everything out and modify it. So I just thought I'd get some of these so I have them if I wanted to build a top, a uh, second, a second uh, Z index, uh, if I wanted to build a, a dual axis, dual Z axis, uh, I could use these. Um, and I could also use this to put on the top if I'm having some kind of um, 
wobble problem. You don't want to secure the tops or else the wobble transfers to the middle and that's not good for your 3D printer. But sometimes you don't want that flapping around up there because if you hit it or bend it, it's not good at all. Um, and I've whacked it a couple times with roll of filaments and stuff. So I thought I'd put a cap on that, give it some play maybe. But I know a lot of people make knobs too you can put on it so you can manually adjust it so you're not sliding your gantry up and down. And, you know, messing with your your uh, your um, so you're not sliding the gantry up and down and and messing up your your, your you know your belts or anything like that or bending something. All right, next one is T nut. I got a bunch of mechanical stuff, some stuff for my 3D printer. Uh, I don't have any T nuts, so I bought some T nuts also for uh, aluminum extrusion rails. Uh, like that's on my ender if I wanted to mount anything to it um, or some mods or something like that this will be good for that all right next up is um, doesn't decoration fancy decoration looks like another fan this is a nice small fan. This is um, five volt sleeve bearing. Just a small little DC fan for five volts. So for five volt project, you want to cool something. Here's your little fan. And it's only um, 20 million, uh, 200 milliamps. Which means you could probably run this at half the speed PWM it or half the speed in like uh, four volts or something like that. Maybe even three volts. All right, next is nuts. D's nuts. Uh, these are just like little wing nuts. I think these are the same size as that. I'm gonna buy a bunch of M2 hardware. I was gonna. I don't have any specific ideas, but I'd like to play around with um, like small version hardware um, mechanics. And yeah, this is so this is like um, what you put on. So I thought this would make a good something or other. Good guide for that if I wanted to, you know, put this inside of a 3D printed part or something like that, it would hold it. Trying to get a something that's uh, M2 size and has a flange that comes out or something to, to align with the top rail so that you can make it linear. It's kind of a pain. I, I kind of didn't really find anything. If anybody has any ideas, um, I thought about these two. These these are the same size. These are M2, um, and these can go on here, and then these can rivet into um, some kind of enclosure that would go back and forth. So, I guess those could too piece of metal stamped out in the end and this would just have a little carriage that slides up and down that was kind of the idea I think and there's something there's some other stuff I, I was going to use this for too but I don't remember I think I got a couple more things I got um this came in the other day I opened it up to see how it was it came nice it was with a dowel this is a threaded rod. I forget how many it's, but it's pretty warped. I mean, you can see that, even though it came with a wooden rod. But I could probably bend that back out. So again, if I was going to make some kind of um, uh, small mechanical um, movement, I, this would be a nice step up from something like this. This is probably M3, three millimeter or four millimeter. I think it's a three millimeter. Let's see, I got the specs on it probably of the threading. Yeah, 3.85. Um, so that would be interesting. I just have to find some way to um, you know, attach this to a stepper and then I can move you know stuff up back and forth, up and down, whatever. So I got that. Like I said, I never played with stepper motors or mechanics. I think it's pretty fascinating. So I'll probably start messing around with that a little bit. Just for fun. I uh, bought these that on clearance are like clay tools, but they're kind of weird shapes. I thought these would be kind of cool for working on stuff. You know, have a lot of different picks and stuff. So I need to start organizing them and see which ones I can use. 
Well, it's kind of interesting shapes with the clay. And then I bought one of these. It's an Omnivice. I already have one and I loved it so much that I bought another one. This is a new one. This was a this is a used one. It's, I think it's an old style. The new one's a little different. It's still just as nice though.